Welcome back to the Marvel Movie Minute, a daily podcast in which we smash apart the films of the Marvel Cinematic Universe into one-minute chunks so we can analyze them in scrupulous detail. I'm Kyle Olson from the Road to Infinity podcast. Hey, and I'm Rob Cabosco. And Kyle. Yes, sir. After a whole lifetime of carrying a wallet. Mm-hmm. And I've gone through all different kinds of wallets. My mother's always been nice to get me a wallet throughout the years, yeah. which I've, you know, I keep the nice leather ones and stuff. And I, my wallet usually has got just a bunch of stuff in it, like all different kinds of things. I used to carry, you know, our collection of uh, fortune cookie uh, fortunes from <laughs> oh, like sure. every restaurant that Marge and I have ever gone to, all that kind of stuff, right? Well, so a few months ago, I finally said, you know what, I'm tired of this. I want to simplify. So I got one of those newfangled, you know, RFID, not that I care about that too much, but, you know, it's, it's one of those little aluminum wallets that's super tiny, and basically yeah. it's designed to hold seven cards wow. with like a little with a little like strap on the top. You're down to seven cards, man. So I, I actually I know it's even less because Whoa. it's so. Here's what I have in it: I have my main debit card, sure. I have my driver's license, I have a picture of my family, I have my health insurance card, and I think I have like just like a personal like a uh, prayer card or something, right? Like I have a, that's it. Like yeah. I have like four or five cards in it because. Hey, our phones have <laughs> yeah, right? everything else. Here we right? are in like, 2020. Like the watches, I mean, our phones are doing everything, including the job of the watch and the wallet and all these things. Right. I'm still surprised that here we are in 2020. I still carry a ton of cards because there's all these like library cards and things oh, that like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, you know, like loyalty cards that they want the actual card. They don't let you. They don't want even just scan do the it. Digital thing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It got, I mean, it's. I'm, I'm annoyed by how many cards I have to carry because they thought everything could just switch over. I tell you though. During college, it was way worse for me because I kind of really? got like ridiculous. What started out is I started working at a movie theater, and so when I worked as a projectionist movie theater, I had to carry a flashlight. So I had a mini mag. Oh, and I had those a, are great! A little thing. So I had to, yeah, and, and so it was you know it's it's uh, probably six inches long or whatever, right. really powerful because I had to, you know you're working in the dark and I had to. So I just started carrying it all the time. So I had like a little belt pouch that had my flashlight. I just had the flashlight all the time. Well then. I started having when mobile phones came out, they were big. So I just got a little thing that could carry both the, <laughs> the uh. flashlight and the. Lo- so I had this little thing on my hip, and then it's just like I had wallet, and I always carried a pen. People like I always carried like a paper clip. I, mean, I had a compass for a while. I had a watch. I had oh, a pocket you're MacGyver. watch on a chain. Yeah. yeah, I really was. It was like, and I got to the point where I had to wear cargo shorts because I was carrying so much stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So finally, it just became like I would, you know, I take off my shorts the end of the day, and it would just thunk to the ground as I'm carrying all of this this stuff. Oh, that's great. Uh, so yeah, so I mean, uh, were it societally acceptable, I would carry a purse just because I like having a. Bunch yeah, of stuff. things have changed in the world of what people carry around with themselves. So why are we talking about this? Because purses. Because we're about to see what's in Betty's purse. Dun, 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 here in uh, minute 69. Nice. Of The Incredible Hulk by Louis Leterrier from 2008. Uh, we pick up where we left off, which is Betty dumps out her purse and let's see what's inside it. <laughs> a bunch of s- stuff. <laughs> She's got a bunch of stuff in there. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, um, it's it's pretty much what you'd expect a a modern woman of the world to be carrying. It's not a big purse, so oh, she doesn't no, no. have a, a a ton of things in it. Let's see, I have I have my list here. So let's see, we see uh, her BlackBerry. So we were right about that. Now right. we get to see it close up. We were we were correct. It was a BlackBerry. There is a digital camera. Uh, there is lip gloss, possibly cherry. Uh, there's a so sunglasses. There's a wallet, and then there's some other item that I could not identify. Uh, there was. It's, it has a, a strange design on it. And so part of the problem where you can't identify it is that there's a little continuity problem that happens really early here. Yes. That, yeah. Like every time they places. cut back to what's on the bed as she, as she dumped it out onto the into the, the bed, uh, the, <laughs> the contents have shifted. So it's a little difficult to determine everything that's in there because every time they cut back, there are different things in different places. So I think it's a compact... Like that, it has like it has a mirror in it too. It's got this yes. cool sort of intricate design. It's a square with this intricate design on the back, uh, and then they cut back and it's gone. Well, or it's flipped <laughs> over. There's that little. That, or it's flipped right. over, but because at another point they talk about when when Bruce is going on his whole thing about this, and I, I like there's actually a nice little dialogue exchange here that Betty is kind of teasing Bruce a little bit because Bruce is taking this thing of like, all right, uh, um, I've been a fugitive uh, for a number of years. I, I know all about this stuff. Uh, let me. Well, because he's a, he's a dope. Uh, he says basically we can't take any of this because they can track all of it. Right. And Betty says like very innocently, 
well, my lip gloss, can they track that? Yeah, he's a dope. He's like, uh, yeah, okay, they don't need that. And she's like, I'm going to need my glasses. Okay, he's like, oh, okay, you can take your glasses and your watch. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we can't, we, we can use most of it. Uh, we can't use the credit cards, the ID, or the phone. Don't even turn it on. So as they cut back to the thing, now we see the battery from her BlackBerry is there as well. Like the compact is gone. And now there's a battery from the BlackBerry there. Oh, Flip that's what the white the, element is. Okay, that's what the got white it, thing is. It. Yeah, you can see sort of the gray sticker with the right. like the voltage stuff on right. it too. So I assume he pulled the battery out, right. and I'm sure he just did it like, and, and they just cut that out because they're just trying to, you know, right. gotta get to New York. Cut, 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 cut. She says, "How are we going to get where we need to go on forty dollars and no credit cards?" And so Betty says, "We could sell this," and she reveals her necklace. This this is what's nice is they don't overplay this because Bruce says basically that's the last thing you had that belonged to her. Right. And he doesn't say who her is and she doesn't say who it is. Like it's a nice way of not you know, there's there's can be a clunky way of doing this in movies of you know, like a a person enters the scene like, oh, what's my brother doing here? No, I don't, like, it wasn't necessary. I'm establishing that's my brother. Yeah. yeah. They just, they very subtly, you know, and you go like, oh, it was her mother's right. and died. And you're, so now you're asking yourself, who is Betty's mother? Well, that's what this podcast is here to talk about. <laughs> One of the things it is. So Betty's mother was Karen Lee Ross. She was a military brat. She'd moved around with, with her family on there. And she fell in love with a young cadet named Thaddeus. Thaddeus Ross. Ah, and the two of them, and so that was, of course, became known as Thunderbolt Ross. So they had a child, and the same thing. Like he, whenever he moved, they they followed along wherever he had to go. But unfortunately, uh, Karen got cancer, and she died when Betty was twelve. Oh. So then, the Thunderbolt is not uh, the most uh, loving, caring father, as we can you can probably guess. Uh, so uh, she kind of had to raise herself from then on to it. But yeah, so like, so this apparently this necklace was the last things that belonged to her mother. So she's uh, Karen Lee Ross uh, has been in a couple things, but unlike uh, most uh, Marvel characters, she has stayed dead. Has not come back. <laughs> no, has not come back. Uh, yeah, the 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 the, uh, the I'd say probably in the early two thousands, the common wisdom was in Marvel comics only two characters stay dead: Uncle Ben and Bucky. <laughs> and as we know, <laughs> at least one of those rules has been freely broken. And if you read comic books, you'll know the other rule has also been oh, broken. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's uh, true. Yeah. So like, so at this point, I would say the only character that ever stays dead is Betty's mom because she's never really been brought back in any way, shape, or form as far as I know from the whole comic. So Hulk fans, if I'm wrong, let me know because I would like to find out because according to all the uh, wiki research I did, she's only been, uh, it's only been in flashbacks. Then Bruce, like, you know, does not want her to have to sell this thing because obviously it means a lot to her uh, and tries to talk her out of it. And she says very sweetly, this is what I love about Liv Tyler's performance, is like she's very forceful but sincere about everything. And she says, yes, we'll have to try and get it back. I, that is such a wonderful line. <laughs> and, and you can see Bruce is just like, well, I lost that argument. <laughs> Well, and you know okay. what? And here's the thing: okay. we've oh. we've talked about this in a previous minute about the yeah. deleted scene, their conversation when they're laying in bed. Well, th- this is she is so the optimist in this relationship. Yes, that look. You know what? It doesn't matter what happens to us; we're going to figure it out. And yeah. I, uh, this I mean, if you had that scene in it, this that yeah. moment would have even made more sense. Yes, but it, yeah, alas, yeah, alas, alas, well, that deleted, a lost the deleted scene. But uh, as they're figuring out their their plan to to get to where they want to go, which at this point we still don't know where that is, right. uh, they cut to a military set, uh, and boy, there's a lot of people in here. And like, say, I, I wouldn't it be great if I knew all their names, <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you if you're a person, these are mostly just extras. So it's not even like that's soldier one or something too. Like you don't. It's even just get credit. no, and it and it's a huge situation conference table room yep. that. Has you know all these clocks and yeah, right? Screens. Did you did you happen to notice that three of the clocks are set to the same time? <laughs> I, I did notice that actually. <laughs> like, I, like so, what like like uh, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a clock set to DC and to New York uh, <laughs> and, and to Bronx. Savannah, and it's like uh, they're all in the same time zone. I don't and care. Staten Island. Put <laughs> the three clocks up. Uh, okay, you, I sir. Need all three of those. Like, yeah, I right. Yeah. yeah, I want one clock for each of the five boroughs. Uh, yeah, it did make me laugh. No, because I did know because we clearly are noticing stuff like that. Yeah. Um, also, I, one thing I thought was interesting is that as they cut down the table, and this is 2008, I mean 10 years ago, but there are some old phones on there. 
I well, mean, an old and intercom. Speaker boxes. I know. Speaker like, boxes. Right. That's like the, my name is Charlie and these are my angels. Oh, kind of speaker that's exactly boxes. what I was about to say. <laughs> Hello, good morning, angels. Like, I mean, yes, that's totally what it looks like. Uh, so, okay, so then um, they're all all this important military, 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 military. They're all sitting around. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Uh, and Spar walks in and is basically like starting the briefing, essentially. And so she says, very like matter of factly, like she's just delivering the the information, keeping everybody up on the same page. Federal's already monitoring phone, plastic, and Dr. Ross's web account. <laughs> oh, I just love that. <laughs> From 2008. They're monitoring his web, her web account. What web account is that? I don't know. A I web account. She means email, but like it's just such a fun turn of phrase from like 2008 when we were still figuring out this whole internets thing. <laughs> Which, by the way, we, we may talk about in, in in the next minute. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. It becomes vaguely important. Um, okay, so uh, Spar continues on. And local PD have been placed on alert. They'll pop up somewhere, and when they do, it comes straight to us. So, like, all right. Okay, good. It's like, they're monitoring and stuff. It'll come to anything. And I got to say, Ross comes off as a real dick here. Oh, huge. <laughs> because, like, Spar works for him. And, like, yes. this is a big moment for her. She's talking to all of these things. And, like... The joint chiefs of everyone. <laughs> right. And so, like, he made it five years and got across the without making any mistakes. He's not going to use a damn credit card now. It's like, dude, I work for you. Why are you yelling at me? Well, and again, listen to the last minute. Don't you think Spar should just be like, uh, yeah, actually, yeah. I want out of the rabbit hole. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can I can I change my mind about the whole I'm thing? I'm done. Yeah. What the heck, dude? Because what she says, they'll pop up somewhere, and when they do, it comes straight to us. She doesn't say when they use a credit card. Yeah. Like, they'll like, like that's a real dick move. I'm like, I'm I'm really uh, I'm really becoming a, a big fan of Spar. <laughs> like, she's one of my favorite oh, no, characters absolutely. in this whole yeah. movie. And boy, she is mistreated. And Ross, you suck. Yeah, like, like not shit, cool. Like, it's like you're not even like not even an inspirational speech. You deliberately took a shot at your own assistant. I don't even know what her, you know, she, like what her what her official role is. Uh, but like, dude, chill. Well, and also, I mean, okay, we're not going to go this far, but the overtones of that everyone assembled in that room is ninety eight percent male. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, that's cheeseball even on top of that. So yeah. may- maybe it's just to make you even more hate Ross. Right? Yeah. Like, 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 dude. I'm, I, like, like, I'm the only woman in this room. This is a tough job. Could you back off a bit? Yeah, that's not cool. No, 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 not cool. Not anyway. cool. And that's unfortunately with the minute it comes to an end. Yeah, uh, that's it. I'm on a note. <laughs> because the rant will continue on in minute 70. Uh, but uh, there actually is a, a very slight deleted scene that would fit in here, too, uh, where... Th- because they talk about going to, basically, they're going to sell the necklace. Well, they actually, there is a deleted scene where they show her selling the necklace. It's like less than a minute long. I, I don't even, it's like one of those things where, okay, you deleted the scene. Why did you even bother to, like, put it on a <laughs> Blu ray or anything? It's really boring. It's like Bruce is putting trash in a trash can or, like, a dumpster, which we assume is the rest of her stuff. And she comes out and says, uh, something, some along the lines of, like, oh, don't worry, we'll get it back. It's like, yeah, you covered that in the room. Like, what? So, well, no. Here's why. Here's why the deleted scenes here. I assume that because, this existed before that. Well, that one existed because somebody involved in this movie. That's their car. <laughs> and okay, and I and I actually couldn't figure out. I mean, it's a it's a circa 1970s, like one of those big, huge coupe cars, right? Mm, I mean, yeah. and it looks. It's got mag wheels. It's got everything, right? <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't, and I actually couldn't find. I don't know if it's it's in that whole era of like Chevy Lagunas, and I and I say that because my we, my family had a Laguna, right? <laughs> like these weird car models that were all like in the seventies, late seventies. Mm-hmm. That's why I think the shots included because somebody said, "You cut my car." My, I love that car, and it's cool, right? It's just a weird scene, and especially like the scene. guys. Like you could see the guy. I mean, it's almost like out of a different time. Where uh-huh. the guy's getting in and out of the car with like an old like thirteen inch television, <laughs> yeah, and they're yeah, just you're like, not "Yo, gonna, you're not going to get anything for that." <laughs> no, like, what is happening? It's uh, just and weird. apparently, so this is this is this is why you listen to this podcast because I know how much money Betty got for her necklace. Okay, now that's and that's the other issue. Mm-hmm. She doesn't even tell him how much, no. and you know his reaction is just like, "Oh God, right?" Like yeah. that's all you got. Why couldn't you at least just say it? Yeah, they put it in the commentary. 
<laughs> How much so was it? Apparently, they got it. Ready, everybody? Seven hundred dollars. Wait, what? Yeah, that's how much money they got. Well, seven hundred dollars. Of course, is amazing we know, for a pawn shop. Gonna, I, I know, right? Like, how much was that thing actually worth? Not that I haven't. I haven't. Okay, I'm just gonna admit I have was not. It, I've, I, I've, I've never. Think, I've not ever used a pawn shop, but yeah. but I do, I've watched pawn stars enough to know <laughs> about how pawn shops. So work, was it right? like that when necklace was worth like three grand? And I they mean, gave her seven hundred bucks well, for no, it. Well, no, it probably was worth like. <laughs> because and now, now you're yeah. asking yourself, well, what's Betty gonna spend seven hundred bucks on? You're gonna find out in minute seventy. Because <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> this crazy. is the case. The minute ends with uh, you know Ross and Mid Ranch, and then also the a, a erstwhile visit to a, a pawn shop. So, in the meantime. If you like what we're doing here and you like what they're doing over on the Next Real Podcast, you can support us because we have our own Patreon. That's right. Uh, nextreel.com slash Patreon. You can find access to it. We get behind the scenes. You get the episodes early. You get behind the scenes information what's going on. You get access to special Discord uh, channels. It's all sorts of good. And even for a dollar a month helps us uh, pay for bandwidth because microphones important. aren't free. Yes, please. So we and we appreciate all of our our Patreons. Uh, we're, we hope you're enjoying the early access, and the rest of you, come on and join us over there. So in the meantime, we'll see you back here for minute seventy. Uh, we hope you had a smashing good time. Until next time, true believers. Bye. Bye.